So this is a remake to a video that I did a few years back. It was a comparison video between 2430 and 60 FPS, except the only issue was that it was recorded on a Samsung phone in automatic mode and it wasn't done properly. So due to a recent YouTube comment I got on that video, I've decided to redo it, but also explain shutter speed and frame rate at the same time and how they work together, why they're used and how they're used. In filmmaking, most of us follow the 180 shutter rule. So basically what it is in simple terms is that the 180 shutter rule means your shutter speed has to be double of what your frame rate is to get the proper motion blur in your footage. Now some people agree with this, some people don't agree with this, personally I follow this, I love this rule, and I use it all the time. But rules aren't always meant to stay the way they are in filmmaking, so in this case this rule can be broken for different types of cinematic movements. For example, in some certain music videos they will use a very very slow shutter speed and they'll get a cool jumping effect for their actor or their singer or sometimes there'll be people will use a faster shutter speed, especially in photography to capture something like super fast motion, action, sports, that sort of thing. So now what is shutter speed exactly? Shutter speed is a little thing that opens up in your camera. Basically, if your shutter speed is one over 125, that little shutter inside of your camera, whenever you go to take a picture, will open up for one 125th of a second and it'll stay open and capture light and absorb it into the camera sensor and then it'll close after that time. So if it was one second, then that shutter will stay open for one second. If it was one over 60th, then it would stay open for that amount of time and so on. So the slower your shutter speed gets, the choppier your video is going to be. So in general practice, if you're filming in 24 frames per second, you're gonna wanna have a shutter of one over 48. Now, not all cameras have 1 over 48, so sometimes it has to be 1 over 45, or even sometimes 1 over 50. If you're filming in 30 frames per second, you're going to want to have a shutter speed of 1 over 60. If you're filming in 60 FPS, then you're going to want 1 over 120 or 1 over 125. And if you're filming at 120, then you're going to want about 1 over 1 or 1 over 250. So before we get into the examples, I do want to share what camera setup I'm using because a lot of this can vary from setup to setup. For example, with my camera, since it's considered a crop sensor camera in 4K resolution, no matter what the frame rate is or shutter speed, it will always look choppy in 24 FPS. It's almost like a jello effect. It's called rolling shutter, but that's for a different video. But anyways, I'm using a Sony ZV-E10 and it has a 18 to 105 millimeter F4 Sony lens on it. Now let's get into the examples. Now it is important to note that changing your shutter speed will also change your lighting. So the slower you make it, the longer that shutter stays open, the brighter your image will become. The faster you make your shutter speed, so 1 over 125, 1 over 250, and so on, the faster you make that, the darker it's going to make your image, and the more light that you're going to need to power it. So. Basically what I did was I used a variable ND filter. What this is, is it's basically sunglasses for your camera. That's the easiest way to put it. So this has an adjustable little area here on the end and you can adjust this, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter, and you can change it based on your shutter speed. Now, why would you wanna have this? So in order to keep your natural motion blur and keep that same shutter speed whenever you're filming outside in the daylight in a very bright area, maybe in an indoor area with a lot of light, 
uh, you're going to want the ND filter so that you can make it dark enough to where you can still keep that shutter speeds because you don't want it to be too bright. You don't want it to be blown out or anything like that. So this is actually how I did my example footage in between each example clip. As I adjusted my shutter speed, I adjusted my variable ND filter as well. Now moving a little bit into frame rate, why do we want to use something like 60 FPS and 120 FPS? Why do we want to use 24 and 30? Well, general usage pretty much is 24 frames per second is more film, movies, and it's the, considered the cinematic frame rate. 30 frames per second is a very general frame rate. A lot of phones will record in this. This is just good for overall general video where, you know, not fast action, not super slow action or movements, just kind of regular video. 60 frames per second is better for sports or a fast moving subject, or if you want to do a little bit of slow motion. So if you record a video in 60 frames per second, you can slow it down by 50% to go to 30 FPS or around 44% to go to 24 FPS. Now recording at 120, you can do the same thing and your image will be a little bit darker. So lighting does become a little bit more tricky, but at the same time, you'll be able to slow this down by 30 ish percent or even 26%. And you'll be able to keep that 24 to 30 FPS FPS as your end result, but you'll, you'll be able to have slow motion video. So this is the easiest way that I could explain shutter speed and frame rate in the fastest amount of time possible. If you guys enjoyed this, please leave a like, please subscribe. Let me know if you want more of this. I would absolutely love to cover more topics like camera aperture, how cameras work, and whatever else you guys can come up with. So let me know down in the comments below, and thank you for joining. See you next time. Peace.